Is this on? Can you guys hear me? Oh, this reminds me, being a patient, I feel like I can't be heard that well. Let me go up on stage for a second here. This should help. Now, was that me, or did healthcare just sound like a business? We'll get to that in a minute. Hi, my name's Christopher. I'm a patient just like all of you. And I'm thrilled to be here, to have a stage like this, for my voice to be heard. You see, I'm not just a patient. I'm actually a healthcare executive as well. In the past 20 years, I continue to grow more and more frustrated with our model. Actually, it's, it's more of an anger, I think, at this point. There's nothing wrong with healthcare being a business. Don't get me wrong. Actually, businesses have done the right way, increased competition, performance breeds better outcomes. It can be done the right way. But today, it's just not. And I can't think of a better way to frame the patient experience today than with a pair of shoes. It seems like when you hold a pair of shoes, you can almost get in them and kind of see what it was like to be a patient. These are my daughter's shoes, Amelia. I heard her laugh earlier, so I know she's here. Amelia's four. She's up here as well. You'll notice she's got a significant anaphylactic rash going on here. Amelia had an ear infection, so my wife and I went shopping for health care. I'm sure many of us in this, in this room have gone through this. So I looked at the, the data that's out there for, for my family, probably the most important thing, right, that I'm shopping for as the father of a household. And I could look at an in-network provider. Anybody ever went and saw a doctor in-network? That's kind of how we make a lot of our determination today. One that was kind of local to our, to our house, and of course, a nice building with all the technology. Here's the problem. She had an ear infection, and this was the outcome after we saw the doctor. So when you go to the healthcare provider today, as we all know, you pay up front. You pay for an outcome that might not have even been determined and agreed upon between you for the service. And I'm fine with there being errors in healthcare. As a matter of fact, that's not why her picture's up here today. In 24 hours, we went back to the same provider, and we were sharing our story. My daughter was talking about how she felt. She couldn't breathe that well. And they prescribed the same medication again after we paid the same copay in the front end with no recourse in the back end. There's no receipt for this experience. And we've all been there. But okay, I mean, dramatic, right? It's the dad that's mad about his daughter's shoes that were tossed to the wayside. I mean, surely this isn't the case for chronic and rare disease patients. I picked this tie out today, a significant month actually. It's Bleeding Awareness Month. And there's a red tie campaign. 30 years ago, President Ronald Reagan said, this is hemophilia month. And for those of you that aren't familiar with hemophilia, it's a critical bleeding condition and they're internal type bleeds. You'll see here, this is patient Mike. That's his hand. It's an example of a bleed going on inside. But sometimes things get worse for a hemophiliac. Sometimes it's an external bleed, like a gastrointestinal bleed, a critical situation. So this pair of shoes here, I can remember, I happened to have been with Mike when we took him to the ER. He fell over in pain, we took him to the ER with an active GI bleed here locally. And Mike had a lot to tell the physician. The physician couldn't hear him. The physician was the physician in this circumstance. So we went into the lobby and I saw him on his phone and he was probably searching for hemophilia since there's only 20,000 hemophiliacs. He probably hadn't been trained on it since med school. And Mike sat there in these shoes, trembling said, I know it's not going to go right. I've been here 20 times. They don't listen to me. You see, when you misjudge a community like hemophiliacs, these are some of the most dynamic and knowledgeable folks. And had the physician listened, or the nurse, or the intake person, for five or six minutes, Mike would have had a tremendous outcome. But do you know where these shoes were tossed? Out the door. And do you know what they prescribed, Mike? A narcotic also known as an opioid. Everybody's heard about the epidemic today. Mike didn't go to the ER because he had just pain. He had a chronic bleeding condition, but the issue was the doctor saw how expensive the medication was, and that's the truth. A $40,000 medication, he didn't get admitted. He was sent home and said to follow up with his doctor the next morning. How do you stand for something like that? How was I supposed to go silently? And obviously I'm not today. 
That's why I'm so proud to be here. Mike's actually with us in the crowd, and I, I couldn't be more proud to watch a guy navigate circumstances like that and keep going. Proud to share his story. So let's shift gears. I think, I think I've kind of set the stage here for a little lighter perspective. All right, Christopher, you got our attention. Clearly, you're a passionate guy. What should healthcare look like? Now, this is somewhat tongue in cheek. What if I told you healthcare should look like a three in one avocado slicer? Now, bear with me because this is going to be a leap. This product is $9.99, $10 product. On Amazon, it's one of the top reviewed products. Now, I'm not an avocado guy, so please don't throw avocados at me if I misspeak here. But anytime I see that, where have you been on my life, or this is a life changing product, I might consider it for $9.99 because I could always return this if it didn't work. 3,000 data sets, and it's on here, it was 22,941, but I did my diligence this morning and checked out. We broke the 3,000 mark here for reviews. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have no clue how good my physician was at treating ear infections. Mike had no clue the doctor's qualifications when he went to the ER. Now, my, my purchase at that time was probably $1,500. Mike's was probably about 18000 but we had no data. And then we had no way to review said services for the next folks. Shocking. But what this really is, if you think about it, this is a scoreboard. Amazon's given us a scoreboard. Scoreboards equal accountability. Performance accountability, it's in all of us. Rhetorical question here. You know what happens when you coach seven-year-old boys or six-year-old boys and you say, now listen, we're not going to keep score in this league, okay, kids? You know what the kids do? Every inning they come to the dugout and they tell you the score. I got two boys, so I'm an expert. They do it in hockey as well. Then you tell them, okay, we're not keeping score, but you all get a participation trophy. Son, it's the American way. You know what they say then? Why? We didn't keep score. What did we win? Maybe I should just tell my son, well, son, you see, T-ball, it's just like healthcare. Everybody gets a trophy, the payment, and there's no scoreboard. Pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. Interesting. My wife and I just got back from Arizona last weekend. It was a great time. We were actually visiting a family member who's a professional baseball coach, Major League Baseball, the top of the top. We were talking, their team did not end with a good score on the big scoreboard, so we were talking about the analytics, Saber metrics, Saber analytics it's called now. For every pitch thrown to a catcher off the mound in Major League Baseball, there are 30 data sets per pitch. How the ball spins, how it reacts, where it lands, da 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 on and on and on. That equates to over 21 million data sets at the end of a Major League Baseball season just on the pitcher throwing one pitch. In healthcare, every year, there's 990 million healthcare visits. I think there's some data we could capture there. If Major League Baseball does it, maybe healthcare should follow suit because here's the secret I haven't told you yet. Guess who gets the data? Not just my cousin, not, not the pro coach. The fans get it. We get it. Everybody gets access to the same data. Now, we can't derive the same insights that my cousin can because we're not professionals, but we get the opportunity to. And so would Mike and so would my daughter Amelia. If you give us your performance data, show us how great you are. That's all we're asking for. So how do you do it? I was driving here today. I'm tired of seeing billboards about health systems. My favorite's the ER one. Come to our ER. We've got low wait times. Ask Mike what happens when you get in after the wait time. We're the best heart hospital in North America based on this billboard. I want to see the batting averages. I know they're out there. I'm not doom and gloom for healthcare. Actually, I'm a proponent. I want to be out there advocating and championing my neurosurgeon because of the data, just like every other purchase we make. Don't make me bring back out this avocado slicer to get you on board with what I'm saying. <laughs> Patient surveys. If you talk to patients, whether you're a nurse, you're a doctor, and you actually start to listen, the information you can gather is amazing. In my career today, what we do is focus just on that. You can diagnose and un understand someone's care continuum with three or four questions that you never thought possible. You don't know if somebody's going through a hard time in their life just because you prescribed a medication that has nothing at all to do with depression, but you might learn. But you got to track that data and open surveys, not just check a box, how do you feel? I'm talking open text field surveys. We're all doing it today on our phones. Give us a minute to tell you everything about ourselves. Then see where you can help me from a resource standpoint. 
Patient-reported outcomes um, are measurements that will change the game in the pharmaceutical world. Everybody's heard the news right now about the crazy cost of drugs. Well, there's a much crazier story to drugs than that. We go to our doctor, and in my case, our patients are on typically $500,000 to a million dollars of drug a year per patient. So they go to the doctor on month one. They don't see the doctor until month eight again. The only way we know if these expensive medications are working is if patients provide feedback on quality of life. I can walk up a flight of stairs now. I, I feel better. I haven't missed so much school. I'm back at work. These missing data sets are the outcome proofs where insurance companies can finally learn, you know what, this is why we're paying for this medication. It's really working. Or it's not. It starts with us. We're powerful enough to do it. But we've got to be empowered. And that leads me to pro healthcare providers. All of us. We've got to give everyone a platform to see our data like we try and capture yours. You should be able to know the batting average of our physicians to keep my baseball analogy going. Why aren't we? Why don't we? Our physicians are the brightest and most talented in the world. I want to see how great they are. I want to see them striving for improvement. And even if the doctor's batting average isn't that well, it doesn't mean I won't go there. It knows I'll be able to have more of an intelligent discussion around, is there a colleague of his or hers that might be able to help better? It's all about sharing the data. So let's look at the patient experience tomorrow, what it could look like. Actually, let me share with you what my team's doing today to empower folks like yourself and myself in their care. At some point, we're all patients. Many of us start out this way at birth and will end this way as adults. When you find yourself in a patient's shoes, the importance of this experience becomes very clear. So why does healthcare remain such a fractured and disconnected service if it touches us all? The answer isn't easy, but we know collaborative care is often missing in today's model. This is especially true for chronic and rare disease populations. So the search is on for a better way, but maybe the answer has been here all along. Maybe it's the patient. No one holds healthcare more accountable than patients themselves. Using the most up-to-date technologies, a comprehensive patient-centric model of care has emerged. This connected patient initiative empowers the patient voice. Much like consumer feedback at the retail level, this data is used to provide better service. Patients become engaged and motivated when their input is acted upon to improve care. Implementing a formalized patient experience program drives performance accountability and makes patient experience a measurable outcome. Surrounding patients with the resources needed to achieve their specific outcomes allows us to keep score in healthcare. Understanding the score is critical to improving care for both the patient and the provider. A collaborative analytics platform is used to share quality of life metrics, patient reported outcomes measures, and clinical progress with the patient's entire care team. Selecting members of the care team based on personality assessments identifies optimal communication styles, relationship preferences, and team chemistry markers. Assigning patient experience navigators to support patients as they face economic, social, and community barriers improves the overall quality of care. Advanced clinical pharmacists monitor patient therapy progression and identify intervention opportunities. High-performance nurses provide a new level of integrated care management. On-demand virtual visits allow for patients to connect to clinical experts in real time when it's needed the most. Cutting-edge technologies like augmented reality imaging devices are used to provide a new standard of care. Delivering easy access to care is accomplished through advancements like Wheel E. Patients can receive care on their terms with a simple push of a button. In order to have a scoreboard, you have to keep score. That's why we measure everything we do. There isn't an app or a new technology to solve the current healthcare dilemma. There's a patient waiting to be empowered. I was supposed to be dramatic. So in reality, it's on us. We're the healthcare consumers in so many ways, in so many ways people purchase healthcare on behalf of us, our insurance plans, but our voice can be heard if you take the initiative to do it. We've got to make a change. There are providers that want to offer the model that you just saw. We happen to be based in Kansas City, but we're nationwide. And the services you saw are just standard for us. 
every way we can think of to empower patients, we know results and outcomes. And we share that data. We share it with everyone, all the stakeholders. And we want to share with our competitors because the scoreboard has to be unbiased. You have to all agree to the rules in a marketplace and then compete to see who is the best. And I might not always be the best. My team might not always be the best fit for you and your family. But man, it's a start to have that data. So I want to do a mic drop right now, but it's attached to my cheek and I can't. So I'm going to challenge you this. As patients, let's reverse that trend. Let's pick up the mic. Let's talk into it and let's make sure our providers hear us. Thank you for your time.